Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. I'm Neil Rothletter. I'm here with my colleague, Andy Wickersham. Andy and I are part of AWS Professional Services. We're in the uh, security and infrastructure global specialty practice. In AWS Professional Services, we work directly with customers to design and build applications and tooling to help their business be successful in the cloud. In security and infrastructure, we have an unofficial motto, which is to help customers have the confidence and technical ability to move their most critical workloads into AWS. I mentioned that experience because it, it's a, an important point in the security reference architecture. We didn't want this to be a, a thought exercise. Uh, the work that we're gonna share with you, the guidance, the examples, they're all based on real use cases, uh, inspired uh, by real work we did with customers, real solutions that we build. We felt that it's really important that this kind of thing be grounded in reality. So before I begin, I, I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that, that while we talk here today, uh, while uh, we're recording this, we're still in the midst of a global pandemic. Uh, and I, I wanted to share uh, one small coping mechanism I've developed in the last two years. Um, as humans, we're, we're very visually oriented and we're very face oriented. We really do a lot of communication through our faces. And as uh, many of us have been uh, wearing masks for the last two years, uh, it can sometimes be difficult uh, for me to connect with somebody, to understand, uh, to read their expression. Um, so often I might meet somebody that looks like this. This is a picture of me, by the way. Um, they look very serious or very intense or very troubled. Um, and, and that can create a distance as, uh, as I try and connect with them. So, so the trick that I've learned is, is to assume the best possible outcome, to assume that while they might look uh, very serious uh, with the mask on, I'm going to assume that underneath the mask, they look like this. And that makes them much more approachable, and I find my uh, conversations tend to be both more productive uh, and a little more fun. So let's, uh, uh, what, it, what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna talk about the AWS Security Reference Architecture. I'm gonna abbreviate that as the SRA, Security Reference Architecture. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, where it came from, um, what it is, uh, why it matters to you, how you can use it. Uh, there's a lot of material to cover. So uh, Andy and I aren't gonna be able to go through all of it. We're gonna give you some highlights. We wanna kind of whet your appetite for what lies ahead. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a high level overview, help you understand how to navigate the content so that when we're done, you can uh, follow up and, and choose the part that uh, would be most useful to you. So let's start with why build uh, a security reference architecture. Um, so at AWS, we, we uh, continue to build uh, security oriented services, services that uh, assist you in security. And, uh, and, and to go along with those, we have a variety of documentation, uh, uh, blog posts, workshops, tutorials. We hold events like this to help you understand how to use those services. And, and customers tell us they love that. They love the ability to dive deep into our services and really understand specifics of the use case. Um, but one of the things they asked us for is the big picture. They have asked us, I need to understand the set of security services and those related to security. I need, I need to understand them holistically. I need to understand um, how I should think about them across my uh, AWS organization. Uh, and, and as we probed on this and started to build a little and talk to customers and evolve this, it, it, what we really learned is, is people were asked, customers were asking for three things. Um, one is how do I think about this whole set of security services? There are a lot of them. Um, beyond their specific function, maybe it's an identity service, maybe it's a logging service, the question is, how, how do I group these? How do I decide how do they go together? How, how do I build a mental model of all the security services? The second thing people were really asking is, is where do I uh, put these security services? Where do I operate them in my environment, in which accounts, in which parts of the organization? And the third part of their question is, how do those work together? I get a deep understanding of a, a particular individual service or a small combination of services, but, but how do I think about how these services uh, go together? And so we took uh, that feedback, as I said, we iterated with some customers and we developed uh, the AWS security uh, reference architecture. So at a high level, it's a set of uh, guidance, examples, and design considerations for deploying the full set of AWS security services in a multi-account structure. It's really composed of, of three pieces. 
At the center of all of this is a one-page architecture diagram. I know it's a little hard to see in this slide. We're going to zoom in. But we wanted to get a one-page diagram that would include all the security services and the guidance. With that uh, diagram is uh, a document. It's a live HTML document. You can download it as a PDF, which really dives deep um, into the decisions that went in to, to that architecture. Uh, it starts with security foundations. It goes through the different account structure. And it talks about the services, how they connect, how they relate to each other. The third piece we wanted to have is we wanted something for the engineers so they could start building this. The design ideas, the architecture ideas, the integration ideas are, are really good. They're really well founded. But we wanted to make sure we also had the opportunity for engineers to build things. And so there's a code repository which will get you started building with some of the concepts in the SRA. I do want to highlight uh, a couple of our guiding principles as, as we built this. Um, one is uh, we really wanted to emphasize, as our customers ask, this holistic view. Uh, one of our goals is to have all of the security services and security-related services in this uh, diagram. Um, so, spoiler alert, they're not all there today. We are missing a few. Um, there is a version 2 coming. Uh, there will be an update. There will be continual updates. I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, our goal is not to dive deep into individual services. It's really to take this uh, broader holistic view. Another one of our guiding principles is we really wanted to have high quality, what we call bar raising quality. Um, we, we wanted this to be a credible and authoritative source that customers could look to for what their security architecture should look like. So as I mentioned, uh, you have folks like uh, Andy and I from Professional Services. We have folks from Solution Architecture who have worked on this. We have input from our service teams. We have input from some of our internal security uh, teams. And we really wanted to make sure uh, this is a high uh, quality product. And the last piece is uh, it's a living document. Um, we know that uh, your workloads change, your applications change, your emphasis change. And AWS introduces new services, new features. Um, and, and so we have the commitment to update this document uh, somewhere a couple times a year. Uh, obviously, at an event like reInvent, uh, new products get announced, new features get announced. We don't want this to go stale. We want this to stay uh, current with what we're seeing as the best practices on AWS. So, so what do you do with these artifacts? We've got an architecture diagram. We've got a document. We've got a code repo. What, what can you do with them? How do they help you? Um, so uh, the first place is if you've got a new start, either literally new to AWS, but even if you're not new to AWS, but you're launching a new workload or a new application, um, the SRA is a terrific starting point. It is the template it's, um, that has all the services, and you can just start there and modify it as you need. Pardon me. Now, of course, uh, some of you, uh, uh, many of you, have been on AWS for a while, and you've got designs and you've got security implementations. You can still use the SRA. As, as I mentioned, your, your applications uh, evolve over time. Uh, we all like to do uh, continuous reviews and updates of our security posture. And the SRA becomes an excellent guide to looking at your current design and your current state and comparing that to the SRA. Uh, finding the differences where they exist and examining those uh, more closely to understand why and what, if any, modifications you want to add. I'll, I'll talk more about that uh, in a moment. And, and then the third way to use it, uh, you know, we've mentioned is to bootstrap your implementation. Uh, Andy's going to spend a bit of time uh, on the code repo and what's in there uh, and how you can use it and how you can deploy things. And so, so we really wanted to have a number of different ways that you could use the SRA and that all builds. Over time, right, as you feel like you have a secure account foundation, as you feel like you have a way to um, evolve and review uh, your security posture, as you have a way to quickly build, the goal is to uh, help customers get to a stage where they can ship more applications faster and more securely. Now, the SRA alone is not going to do this in and of itself. There's lots of other security processes. There's organizations. There's responsibilities. But Having that uh, big picture, that, uh, uh, that security reference that you feel like you have aligned to, that you feel like you deploy workloads in alignment with, that's going to generate that confidence and hopefully that speed to both shipping and innovation. One, one uh, point worth making. So, so one of the uh, questions we get from time to time 
uh, is someone will uh, come up to us uh, about the SRA and say, you know, I read the SRA, I really liked it. Uh, I implement this differently in, uh, in my account. Maybe it's a customer asking us, maybe it's one of our own field folks saying, I work with a customer. We implement this differently. Are we wrong or are you wrong? Uh, and the answer is, is usually neither of us is wrong. Um, the SRA is a reference. It is not the answer for every uh, customer and every workload. Uh, obviously, customers have different uh, compliance uh, regimes. They have different technology stacks. They have different kinds of data. They have different kinds of stakeholders. We don't think the SRA is the only answer. The SRA is a, is a, a well-vetted, reliable answer, and it's okay if you differ from it. And, and where you want to do things differently, <clears throat> we recommend you use the SRA as that reference, as that yardstick. Um, part of the value of the SRA is the ability to ask questions about your own design and your own architecture. Where you find you do things differently, that's fine. Ask the question, why? Do you have different requirements than we talk about in the SRA? Do you have a different technology stack and you need to implement something differently? Um, th those might be uh, very good legitimate reasons. You want to document those and move on. Um, you may find, however, that the reason you differ is uh, you maybe had to make a short-term trade-off uh, a little while ago as you implemented something and you inquire, uh, acquired a little technical debt and you had it on your backlog but you haven't really gotten around to updating that. This might be a good opportunity to bump up the priority. Um, or you may find you just missed an idea and the SRA uh, proposes a potential solution and you might be inspired by that. You might use the, uh, the SRA and the AWS services or you might find a different solution, but the SRA can serve as that guide. So it's okay to vary from the SRA. Use it as a mechanism to ask yourself questions and document the differences. We're just going to give you some highlights here. We're going to give you some of the navigational aids. There is this, this large architecture diagram. We're not going to go through every service and every account. I just want to give you some highlights and some navigational aids. So <clears throat> the SRA is built on a set of established security foundations. We didn't want to reinvent um, security foundations or new security principles. So um, it aligns to existing AWS security, uh, uh, security recommendations such as the AWS Cloud Adoption Framework. AWS Cloud Adoption Framework, or the CAF, is a framework for helping your organization move through its cloud journey, adopt the cloud, operate in the cloud, optimize with the cloud. It's built on uh, six perspectives three business-focused perspectives and three technical perspectives. There is a security perspective and the technical perspectives. It uh, describes uh, five security epics. And you'll find that the uh, SRA uses a lot of the same language and a lot of the same concepts as that security perspective. There's also AWS Well-Architected. Well-Architected is a framework for building your workloads and applications securely, reliably, efficiently, cost-effectively, um, and the well-architected is built on five pillars. One of those pillars is security. And the SRA really aligns uh, uh, very deliberately towards those security principles. The last foundation is the AWS shared, respons sh shared responsibility model. Hopefully you're uh, familiar with the shared responsibility model. It says that security in the cloud is a shared responsibility between you, the customer, and AWS. Uh, you often hear the phrase as AWS is responsible for security of the cloud, and you, the customer, are responsible for the security of the things you put in the cloud, like your applications or your data. The SRA is designed to help customers fulfill their part of the shared responsibility model. It's an, it's an aid to the services that you can use and configure to make sure your side of the shared responsibility model is as uh, secure as you'd like it to be. So <clears throat> the first thing you'll notice in the SRA is there is a broad account structure. At the top of the, um, uh, the, top of the diagram is, the, is an AWS organization. Within that organization, there are a number of OUs, organizational units. There is an infrastructure OU, a security OU, and a workloads OU. And then within those OUs, there are specific accounts. Again, we didn't want to invent this guidance. We, we have good guidance that is built from our experience, that is built from our best practices. You can find on the AWS website um, 
our uh, AWS organizations guidance, how to use AWS organizations to organize your uh, accounts and manage them, as well as something we call the multi-account strategy, which really goes very deeply into the different types of OUs and the different types of accounts that we recommend you have. So we, we just adopted that. We're just built on top of that. We don't use all of the detail that they do. For example, uh, we really uh, focus on this as a production workload. We don't get into the distinction in the SRA yet between production and uh, dev or test, but uh, our structure and our account structure derives uh, from that, uh, the guidance that exists already. So what do we add? Uh, what we add is the services, right? We, I, I mentioned our, our goal is to put the services into these accounts. Remember those three questions. How do I think about the services? Where do they go? And how do they work together? And so let's, let's dive a little deeper. I know this diagram is a little hard to read. Let's pick one of these accounts and dive a little bit deeper into it. So uh, in the diagram is the security tooling account, right? The security tooling account uh, is uh, dedicated to operating security services, monitoring AWS accounts, uh, and automating security alerting and response. And so what you see in this account is the, the services that do those kinds of things. We've got Amazon uh, Guard Duty, which is a threat detection service for monitoring malicious behavior uh, and anomalous behavior. We've got IAM Access Analyzer, which uh, monitors uh, access to your resources within uh, your zone of trust. Often an account is a zone of trust. Um, we have uh, AWS Firewall Manager, which is actually a configuration service to help you consistently manage things, uh, uh, firewall settings uh, and, and security groups. Over on the upper right there, we have uh, Amazon Event Bridge, which is a key element of uh, automating alert response, alert remediation. Um, that, now, one, one of the design considerations around uh, security tooling, right, one of the alternatives that uh, we see customers uh, use is uh, they may have more than one of these, particularly in a large enterprise. It may make sense to have multiple security tooling accounts. You might give them different names. So, for example, a common one is a security audit or read-only account, an account dedicated not to operating services, uh, not to collecting information, uh, but, but just the ability to read throughout the organization to collect audit information, uh, maybe view some logs. Um, uh, another uh, kind of security tooling account might be a security operations account. Uh, the folks that are, are really uh, day in and day out, uh, responding to alerts, investigating, triage, doing threat detection, maybe doing um, some remediation. So this is a, a slide that really says for a security tooling account, what are the kind of services that go there? Now, the, the other thing we discuss in the security tooling account is integration, right? One of the key questions is how do these services fit together? How do they share information? So one example is AWS Security Hub. Security Hub has uh, at a high level two primary uh, sets of features. One is around uh, aggregation and collection of findings. So one of the things Security Hub does is it collects findings from other sources. The other thing it does is it compares those findings um, to uh, security standards and will alert you if it has findings that violate those uh, security standards. In that integration side of things, Security Hub uh, collects data and findings from a number of different services. We show uh, some of them here. Um, it can also collect findings from a supported set of Amazon Partner Network products. Um, and in fact, you can write your own applications to feed findings in Security Hub. It, it not only collects findings to get that view of different kinds of, of from different kinds of services, um, it, it also aggregates those findings from all the accounts in the organization. And uh, recently announced, it will also collect findings from across uh, multiple regions. And what, one point I want to make here is, uh, while we consider Security Hub uh, a fabulous service with uh, some really strong, very practical uh, functionality, um, it, you may not be using Security Hub, but, but the SRA still has value to you in the sense I mentioned earlier of asking questions. Uh, I just described some functionality about aggregating findings across services, different types, across other products, across regions. Um, if you don't use Security Hub, that, that's perfectly fine. You might want to ask the question of, well, what does Security Hub do? 
And do I need that functionality in our, uh, in our architecture? And if I do, um, do I achieve it with Security Hub or with some other uh, uh, partner products or with some of my own tooling? So as you go through the SRA, um, while we certainly focus on AWS services, it's okay to look at the underlying rationale for the use of those services and ask how you might achieve those security objectives in a different way. Let's look at another count, the, uh, applicate, the AWS uh, uh, SRA application account. Um, so, so you can see there's kind of a lot going on here. Um, there, there are a lot of security services here. Uh, well, one thing I want to want to point out, so a lot of reference architectures, when you, when you go out into the world, you do a, do a search on reference architecture, most reference architectures focus on the primary workload, on the primary business application. And security is either off to the side, or abstracted away, or it's put in a follow-on document. One of the things we really wanted to make sure we did in the SRA is flip that. We really wanted to focus on the security. So, um, one of the things we did is there is an application in this diagram. It's, it's one of the smallest applications you could actually uh, instantiate. It's a simple three-tier web application. You can see the, in, in this case, the application layer is just a few, a handful of EC2 instances. The data layer is an Amazon Aurora database. And the web layer, the presentation layer, uh, is the network is handled in the networking account. So we wanted to make the application as small as reasonable, um, but really focus on the security. There's still a lot going on here. So, so uh, this gets to the question that customers ask of how do I think about all these services, the security services, how do I organize my thinking around here? And uh, there, there's uh, two main ideas here. One is there are security services which are particular to the application that, uh, that you're deploying here. So for example, in the top of this diagram, you see a secrets manager, which is uh, useful for controlling access to credentials and passwords. You see uh, AWS KMS, our key management service, which is uh, used to manage your, uh, uh, your encryption. But there's, there's another set of services which are almost agnostic to the application you build, and they show up in layers. And this becomes a useful concept that we're gonna dive into a little bit more deeply. So you see these three orange boxes on the screen. I'm gonna work from left to right um, in terms of the boxes. So in the leftmost set of boxes, you see uh, Amazon Inspector, and you see Amazon Systems Manager Agent. These are both agents that sit on those EC2 instances. These are two different services that deploy agents onto EC2 instances. Amazon Inspector does uh, vulnerability uh, assessments and application assessments. Um, uh, uh, Systems Manager SSM uh, does a couple different things. One, it lets you uh, manage those instances in terms of updates, for example. Uh, it also lets you connect to instances without having to open uh, an SSH port. But those are two services that help protect instances. If I go just to the right of that, what you'll see is uh, VPC endpoints. In this case, they are service endpoints. This is a set of uh, services that sit on the uh, edge of a VPC. They're really features of our VPC uh, networking. They sit on the edge of the VPC and they allow, uh, they have two primary functions, one is to allow connectivity from the VPC to the respective AWS service um, without the need for a transit gateway or a VPN or any other access to the public internet. Um, so you can be sure your interactions with that service stay on the AWS fabric. The other thing VPC endpoints have is they have <clears throat> what's called an endpoint policy. It's another type of uh, um, permission control policy. In addition to having resource policies, which control um, uh, what, which principles can do what actions on resources, and principle policies, which control uh, what actions on what resources principles can take, these uh, VPC endpoint policies give you another layer of permissions that say what can be done uh, from entities within the VPC. It's another way to uh, control actions. And all the way on the right-hand side of the diagram is a set of security services that really look at uh, an entire account. Um, so, uh, for example, I mentioned uh, um, AWS GuardDuty, our threat detection service. 
That's looking for and monitoring for malicious uh, activity and unusual activity within all the entities within an account. So you start to see this concept of uh, I can organize my security services by these layers. I've got services that look at instances. I've got services that look at my network. I've got services that uh, look at a broader account. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into that concept. Uh, before I go on, I, I just want to pause and uh, review kind of where we're at. Uh, we, uh, we showed you some of the uh, different accounts. wanted to give you a highlight of some of the accounts point out that the SRA, the, the full guide, the full uh, documentation talks about the services that are in those accounts, why they're there, uh, where they communicate and pass data. There's discussion about that. Um, and and uh, we, we've made our way to this concept of security of layers. Of how do I think about organizing all those different services? How did we decide which services go where? Uh, uh, when, when we work with uh, a new account or an existing account. So in, in security, we, we talk a lot about uh, defense in depth, this idea that you don't want to uh, protect things with only one uh, type of protection, one type of control, one service, right? You don't want to protect things only at a perimeter. You want multiple layers of defense, right? Uh, hopefully, multiple layers that overlap a little, this gives you uh, flexibility. It gives you more uh, robust protection. And we can think about the uh, set of security services and security related services in terms of these layers, particularly in terms of an AWS environment. So if you think about our AWS environment, at the top level, you have an organization. Within that organization, you uh, define a set of OUs, organizational units each of which has something in common, a security organizational unit, a workloads organizational unit. You know those will have some common guardrails, uh, some common uh, permission models. Within OUs, you have accounts, uh, multiple accounts. And remember, we generally use an account uh, as, a, as a natural uh, security uh, billing uh, permissions barrier uh, between multiple activities. You've got networking. Just not technically a layer. It's not like networking sits in accounts. But, but you can keep taking this model down to resources uh, uh, and down to principles. And, and once you start to think about this layer and how you might want to protect things, how am I uh, 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 building my security at an organizational level? How am I thinking about security at a networking level? Once I start to do that, I can now map services into these layers. So again, this is a way to build kind of a mental model of services and where they go and, and how they might work together, for example, at the organizational level. So here's a set of services that really focus uh, and operate well on an AWS organization or uh, an OU. Uh, we mentioned uh, CloudTrail. Uh, CloudTrail has a natural default, something called the organizational trail. Uh, sometimes we abbreviate that as org trail. And that's designed to capture API activity across all the accounts in your organization and centralize those logs in one place. Or we could talk about SCPs, um, uh, service control policies. These are policies that uh, uh, limit what uh, can be done at that organization, organizational unit, or below. It's a way to set up uh, guardrails within an organization, within an organizational unit down uh, to an account or Resource Access Manager, RAM, which is a service that an, an allows um, uh, easier sharing of resources between accounts in an organization in a way that uh, can be uh, controlled through uh, policies, um, but also allow uh, where that cross-account access has to happen, allow that to happen uh, using kind of native uh, constructs. So once you think about uh, security at the organizational level, you can also go down a level and look at account level services. Um, these are services that really, their fundamental unit of uh, control or uh, monitoring is at an account. We talked about Amazon Guard Duty, uh, AWS Config, which monitors your uh, resources, it monitors the state of your resources and changes to your resources. Uh, we talked about uh, Security Hub. There is a little bit of, of an asterisk on uh, some of these services, and, and we're going to talk about it in a little bit. So um, Security Hub is an example we mentioned, is a service that sat 
inside the uh, uh, security tooling account, and it also sits within an account. So in a way, it is both an organizational service and an account level service. Um, in this diagram, we have it in the account level service because things like Security Hub and Guard Duty, fundamentally they monitor an account, but they share that information upward in the organization, and we're going to talk more about that. And uh, the full SRA does a similar mapping with networks, and it goes into uh, resources and uh, principles. Let me pause there, catch our breath. Let's talk about where we are so far. We've talked about uh, the general account structure. We've highlighted a couple of accounts, shown you the security services that go in there, uh, given you a couple of examples of where those services share information. Uh, we just walked through uh, one model for how to think about the collection of security services uh, using a layered approach. I can think about security services as operating at my org or my account or my network or protecting my resources. Those are design discussions, a little bit of strategic discussions. Uh, I want to bring it down uh, one level now into some implementation ideas, uh, particularly around recurring guardrails and uh, centralized management. Ideally, across our AWS organization, we want to enable a consistent set of guardrails uh, coupled with some centralized monitoring and governance. And the way that we uh, do that in the SRA is through the use of recurring sets of recurring services. I know this is a little hard to see. Let me talk you through it. So on the lower left is that applications account, that workloads account that we just looked at a few slides ago. You'll see there's a green box on the right-hand side that shows that set of security services. You see uh, Security Hub, Guard Duty, Config, uh, Macy, Access Analyzer, EventBridge, uh, and CloudTrail. That becomes our consistent set of guardrails. What you'll see in the SRA is that same set of services occurs in all the accounts. That way we have, the, uh, for those services that uh, control some sort of configuration, we have the same configuration. For those services that are monitoring accounts, we're monitoring for the same things, and we can pass that information up. So consistent guardrails by using the same services across accounts and then aggregating those results up to, in this case, a security tooling or an org management account so that we get the centralized view, distributed and centralized. Let's talk a little bit about that centralized view and how we might actually implement that. So now we're going to talk about one specific feature. We've gone all the way from high-level uh, design and strategy I want to talk about one specific feature, and there are other the others of these in the document, which is the delegated administrator. Um, so we mentioned services like Guard Duty, Security Hub, uh, Access Analyzer, Config. You, you want to be able to manage these across your organization. They're deployed in every account. You want to be able to uh, aggregate the results. You want to be able to add accounts. You want to be able uh, to monitor and dive into accounts. Um, and, and so how do you do that? So the, the, the natural place to think of, the first place you think of is, well, I should do that from the organization management account, the org management account, that top level account. And, and that's a good place to start, except that the org management account is a little bit special, right? It is the account that created the organization. Uh, as such, it has the uh, ability to add accounts, add member accounts. It can remove member accounts. If I deploy uh, SCPs in my org management account, they affect every account in the organization. So that org management account is a little special, and we, we want to have the right kind of control uh, of who can do what in that account. We want to make sure we have the right kinds of permissions in place. Um, and, and so if, if we can move some of the administration of some of these other services to somewhere else, that would be preferable. And thus we have the delegated admin, the uh, delegated administrator function. What that lets you do for the services that support it is move the administration of those services to any account that you choose. So in the SRA, that turns out to be, uh, for these security services, the security tooling account. Notice this is not a top level account, right? The security tooling account sits inside the security OU, which is part of the organization. And yet, through delegated admin, 
I can delegate the administration of these services into my security tooling account. They still administer those services across my entire organization, but the users of those services, the administrators of those services, don't need to have access to my org management account. So I'm going to hand this off to Andy in just a moment to uh, talk more about the SRA code uh, code repo. But I, I just want to review kind of where we've been with this. And, and again, mention these, these have been highlights of the architecture itself, of some of the guidance about integration, of some of the guidance of how to organize and think about all the security services, and some of the best practices and features. And with that, I will hand it over to Andy, who's going to talk about our code repo. Thanks, Neil. So far, we covered the documented guidance. Now let's talk about the code examples and how you can implement them within your environment. We'll cover the current code examples that are available to you today. The additional items included with each example, since there's more than just code, and how the solutions can be deployed with AWS Control Tower, since that's where we focused our deployment testing. Here are the current available code examples that you can use today. We created the code examples to help you with understanding how to automate the implementation of patterns within the SRA guide. These current modules were selected as they are some of the most requested solutions that customers ask us for. They also include seven of the 10 security services that can be implemented with AWS organizations, which simplifies enabling the service across all your accounts with a single setup. Our plan is to continue adding existing or example solutions to demonstrate how to implement patterns within the SRA guide, as well as solutions uh, to implement AWS security best practices. There are three different methods to configure the modules within an environment. The first method is via AWS organizations where the administration is done within the management account. This method is only preferred if delegating to an, an administration to another account is not available. Currently, the AWS CloudTrust solution is the only one uh, that uses this method. The second method is via AWS organizations where the administration is done within a delegated administrator account. This method is preferred since it allows you to enable additional guardrails like service control policies to protect resources from modification after the initial setup. The third method is to set default configurations for services within each account, like setting the default encryption for EBS volumes. This method helps to ensure all accounts have consistent security configurations. Some of these services might be new to some people, so I'll highlight a few of the services and the benefits that they can provide. AWS CloudTrail is a service that monitors and records account activity across your AWS infrastructure. And an organization CloudTrail allows you to configure it centrally for all accounts sending the encrypted logs to a central log archive S3 bucket. A benefit of configuring the organization cloud trail is that by default, member accounts cannot disable it. This reduces the need to have a, a detective and a remediation solution deployed within each account. AWS config conformance packs are a good way to deploy a collection of config rules as a single entity in, all, in an account and region or across an organization. For example, customers deploy conformance packs for co compliance rules like CIS and NIST. AWS Firewall Manager allows you to define security group policies, providing you with the ability to monitor and remediate overly permissive security groups across your environment. And we also see customers leverage IAM Access Analyzer to help them identify the resources in their organization and accounts that are shared with an external entity. For example, Access Analyzer will identify IAM roles or S3 buckets that are shared outside an account or an, or or an organization. 
we recommend enabling both the organization and the account level access analyzer. All the solutions I described are available to you on a public AWS GitHub repository. You can quickly find the repository by going to github.com and searching for AWS Security Reference Architecture. All the examples in the repo are actual solutions that we built from our experience working with customers that wanted to automate the configuration of AWS security services across their environments. We recommend that you start with these solutions when deploying AWS security services and also use them as a reference when building your own solutions. We may have an example that can get you up and running much quicker or show you a technique that you haven't tried before. We also expect customers to modify the solutions to fit their environment. And if you do make changes to the solutions and feel that others can benefit from them, please submit a pull request or a feature request and describe what, what you changed. Also keep checking back or star the repo so you get notified when we change an existing solution or add a new one. We are always looking for better ways to build solutions and we'll continue to share them within this repository. There is more than just code within the GitHub repository. We provide additional items to help both developers and non-developers with implementing the solutions. The first item we include with each, each solution is an architecture diagram that shows the deployed resources within each account and AWS region. Teams can use the architecture diagram to discuss scoping type questions like, should we deploy this solution in all the AWS regions or just the ones that we operate in? You can also use the diagram to identify resources that you want to protect within each account. Each solution includes implementation guides for both CloudFormation and customizations for AWS Control Tower. We use these frameworks to demonstrate the deployment order within an environment. This is helpful for other deployment frameworks since you can understand the order of deployment and the resource configurations. All deployment IAM permissions and KMS key policies were restricted to just what was needed to enable and configure the services. These are, there are great examples of IAM, S3, and KMS policies within the solutions. The examples enable and configure AWS security services, which sometimes requires additional logic to wait for the service to be enabled before configuring it. This is a great place for you to gain from our lessons learned. Including cleanup scripts with each solution was really important to us since we understand customers like to test out services within a proof of concept environment before deploying to a workload environment. Once the testing is complete, it's nice to know that all the resources are cleaned up if you no longer need the solution. Over the last few years, we have worked with multiple customers to implement security solutions. By leveraging the example code, we were able to get the solutions deployed within a short period of time while closing key security backlog items. In a recent customer engagement, we were able to set up multiple environments within days by leveraging the customizations for AWS Control Tower and the SRA examples to set up the security services across their environments. Here are five steps to get you up and running with the SRA example solutions. The first step is to ensure you have an AWS environment with AWS Control Tower configured, as well as the customization for AWS Control Tower solution. The AWS Control Tower service provides an easy way to set up and govern a secure multi-account AWS environment, and the documentation provides step-by-step -step instructions for configuring the service. The, CFC, the customizations for AWS Control Tower solution provides an easy way to add customizations to your AWS Control Tower landing zone and is configured with a single CloudFormation template. Once your environment is ready, you download the SRA code to your local machine by performing a git clone or downloading and extracting the zip file. 
Next, you'll need to package up any Lambda code within the repository, within the solution you are deploying and stage the zip file within an S3 bucket. We provide example instructions and scripts to help you with packaging the Lambda code and staging it within an S3 bucket. Once the step four is where you update the customizations for control tower solution configuration with parameters that align with your environment and requirements. Many of the solutions have, uh, we've, many of the solutions provide configuration parameters, and this is where you can modify the defaults that we set. Once the configuration is ready, you push the code to code commit to a code commit repo, and this triggers a, the AWS code pipeline, which deploys the solution across your environment. Even if you aren't a developer, we recommend that you check out the code repo to get a better understanding of how the patterns within the SRA guide are implemented. You can find both the prescriptive guide and the code repository by using your favorite search engine and searching for AWS Security Reference Architecture or AWS Security Reference Ar Architecture Guide or uh, GitHub. Thank you, and we hope we piqued your interest to learn more about the security reference architecture and the code examples.